Hi dear students, in this video we will discuss one of the questions of JE Advanced 2023 from physics and it's a question from paper 2 and question number 5 and it's a question from optics part and what is peculiar about the question? See, it's a controversial question and I will go for an in-depth analysis of the question and the solution with a, a certain visual simulation. <coughs> Okay, uh, let's see the question first. Yeah, a monochromatic light wave is incident normally on a glass slab of thickness D as shown in figure. Uh, in the question, the figure is given. Uh, this is the glass slab of thickness D and monochromatic light is coming uh, from this side. Okay, now the refractive index of the slab increases linearly from N1 to N2 over a height edge. See, here the refractive index is N1 and it is uh, N2 over this and it continuously varies linearly and which of the following statement is or are true about the light emerging out of the slab, emerging out of the slab. This is the question. Okay, now see the options. It will deflect up by an angle tan inverse so and so and uh, it will deflect up by an angle tan inverse. Uh, n2 minus n1 into d divided by h okay it will not deflect it will not deflect the deflection angle depends only on n2 minus n1 and uh, not on the uh, individual values of n1 and n2 see many students confused with the option it will not deflect simply because they think the light is coming perpendicularly that means the angle of incidence is zero here and moreover Along this horizontal refractive index remains the same. See, at any horizontal, along any horizontal line, the refractive index remains the same. Refractive index varies from bottom to top in the vertical direction, not along the horizontal. Then how it bends? Okay, we will discuss in detail. See, uh, before going to the details of the question, let me point out one more thing. <coughs> Uh, I could see many solutions available in uh, YouTube, many, many solutions, many solutions uh, like with the help of this diagram. See, what's wrong in this diagram? What's wrong in this diagram? If you accept, okay, light uh, will not bend like this, okay, it will go and uh, finally see what is happening over here. What is happening here? See, this is air or vacuum. How light bends like this? See, AC is the wavefront actually, the emerging, emergent wavefront. But how light ray bends over here? Therefore, this diagram is found to be wrong actually. And after solving uh, with the help of this diagram, obviously you will get an answer which is available in our options. But the diagram is wrong. See, in the question it is given as light wave, light wave over here. Moreover, they are also given over here, monochromatic light wave. That means, uh, uh, I think it's better to consider light wave rather light ray in this case. Okay, now uh, let's see uh, what actually happens in, uh, in this particular case. Yes, uh, I would like to apply this animation, see this. According to Huygens principle, you know, at each and every point of the primary wavefront, secondary wavelets uh, emanates and after a certain time, a common envelope is drawn. Okay, in this uh, in this way, the wavefront approaches the uh, to the glass lab and in the glass lab, as you know, refractive index continuously increases linearly from uh, bottom to top. Now, this wavefront is going to, is going to uh, see, yeah. Yes. Okay, see this. Now the wavefront is about to enter the glass lab. Now see what happens. Keep it in mind, here refractive index is smaller and here refractive index is greater. Okay. See. See this. Uh, the secondary wavelets from this part, secondary wavelets from this part travel slower and from this part it travels with a greater speed okay now the secondary wavelets uh, uh, now we will draw a common envelope to the secondary wavelets that is what is given over here okay this uh, for time being let me mark it as a b a b 
Now again, again, uh, from each and every point of AB, secondary wavelets originates or propagates. And see again, now see this. Uh, yeah, common envelope. The same procedure continues. The same procedure continues. Yes. Okay. Wait. Okay. See. Now, this point, let me mark this as C. The secondary wavelets from this particular wavefront already touch the boundary. But here, what happens? See this? Yeah. Okay. This is the emergent wavefront. The emergent wavefront, let me mark it as PQ. This is the emergent wavefront, PQ. Okay, this is what actually happens in this particular question. Now, many, many things are to be pointed very carefully. See, one thing. In the question, it is given that this distance is h. But I would like to argue that it is different uh, from this height. This is not h actually. This is h dash. This is h dash. Another thing, another thing. See, here the bending, the bending, uh, you can say, uh, there are continuous, uh, continuous bending is there. Suppose this is D1 and this is D2 and I would like to say D1 is different from D2. Why? Simply because the refractive index at the bottom is different from refractive index at the top. Therefore, the bending will be different. And, uh, and hence, this H, uh, this H dash will not be actually equal to H. Clear? Now, see the skeleton of the animation or the video. Uh, see, as I told you, D1 is different from D2. And moreover, uh, this uh, AB, this distance AB is not equal to H actually. But you can approximate it as H. Uh, but on condition, when D is very, very less than compared with the H. But uh, it is not given in the question actually. But from the given diagram, you can assume uh, D is very small and H is very large. In the given diagram. But nothing is given uh, in the question actually. Okay. Uh, we will assume uh, this condition. We, if you assume this condition, then even you can draw uh, this, uh, what this, this is P. Let me mark this as Q. Then P A and Q B can be drawn as parallel, as parallel. Uh, parallel to uh, horizontal uh, can be drawn in the horizontal direction uh, but on condition when d is very very less than h okay now uh, now we can go for the solution uh, moreover see the here here this is the uh, emergent wavefront and uh, light rays are perpendicular to the wavefront no problem everything is okay and uh, you are supposed to find uh, the refract uh, sorry the angle of deflection the deflecting angle now it is. Uh, I think it is very clear that there will be some deflection. There will be some deflection. Now we can calculate the deflection. Uh, before that, you see uh, geometrical path length and optical path length. What is geometrical and optical path length? See, optical path length can be defined as uh, one of the definitions defined as the distance traveled by light and vacuum in the same time in which it travels uh, a given path length in the medium. If GPL, GPL stands for geometrical path length, if the geometrical path length is D, then the optical path length can be calculated as ND. Refractive, it's a uh, very common thing. Uh, hope you know that uh, the OPL is ND. ND is the OPL. Okay. See, now uh, uh, under this condition, when D is very, very less than H, which is not given in the question, but from the diagram, we can assume like that. H is very small when compared with H. Uh, D is very, very small when compared with H. Okay. Now, you can draw like this. Yes. Now, what happens? Here, refractive index is greater and here, refractive index is smaller. And hence, within the time, when this right, uh, light uh, uh, reaches at this particular point, obviously, this light will travel a uh, longer distance and the additional distance traveled by the bottom part is L. Okay. Now, uh, it is very clear that the deflection is theta and uh, we can calculate the angle theta. Uh, very simply, you can calculate it. Okay. Therefore, uh, suppose the time taken by this light from 
this particular point to this particular point is t in the same time interval in the same in the same time interval this light travels longer distance as i told but the optical path length will be the same the optical path length will be the same suppose uh, here the opl is uh, opl the corresponding opl the corresponding opl equal to n2d n2d and uh, in that particular uh, time interval the distance traveled the corresponding optical path length of the bottom part is nothing but this is 2 now opl for 1 is n1d plus l n1d plus l because this is already in vacuum L is already in vacuum or in air, no problem. And this should be equal because the time interval is the same. It is the distance travelled in vacuum in the same time. Okay, therefore you can write N2D uh, is equal to N1D plus L. N1D plus L or L is equal to N2 minus N1 into D. N2 minus N1 into D. Okay, now it's very simple to calculate from the right angle triangle. See, this is the right angle triangle. From there, you can calculate sin theta. Sin theta is equal to opposite side. Let me mark this as P, Q, R. Ah, oh, already C is there. Uh, then this is, let it be A. And this is B. And this is C. Okay. Okay. Therefore, uh, sin theta is equal to opposite side. That is B, C. L divided by uh, hypotenuse is H. In fact, it is not actually H. Keep it in mind. Okay. Uh, or now this is equal to what is L? L is N2 minus N1 into D divided by divided by H. Or what is theta? Now theta is either theta is the deflection which is equal to sine inverse sine inverse N2 minus N1 divided by H divided by H into D. Isn't it? Yes n2 minus n1 my, uh, divided by h into d okay okay yes <coughs> like this like this this is actually the deflection but very unfortunate to say that no such an answer uh, you can see in the uh, given option see this yeah uh, it will deflect up by an angle or oh, this is tan inverse this is also tan inverse no sine inverse is given in the question Okay, uh, but actually the answer is uh, we got like this n2 minus n1 into d divided by h, but we got it as uh, sine inverse, not tan inverse. Therefore, again, again, see, yeah, again, uh, let us go for uh, this condition. This condition, when d is very, very small, uh, when compared with h, then uh, you can see theta will be very smaller. Then in such case, when theta, when theta, is very very small theta is very very small comma then then what you can write then theta is approximately equal to tan inverse tan inverse uh, n2 minus n1 into d divided by h divided by h okay this is the this is the right answer this is the right answer actually this is the right answer but no such answer is given in the question therefore we can switch over to this answer but on the condition h is uh, very very large when compared with the compared with the d now again uh, let's switch over to the question again yes see the here see h is given like this and d is very small from this you can conclude that uh, d is very very small uh, when compared with h okay moreover uh, therefore uh, uh, actually i told you actually this is sine inverse this is uh, sine inverse but it is also okay uh, under that condition therefore b is a right answer moreover it will not deflect that's a wrong answer and this is also found to be wrong and the final one is the diffraction angle depends only on n2 minus n1 and not on the individual values of n1 and n2 that perfectly sounds good because this is n2 minus n1 uh, the individual values of n1 and n2 is not at all not at all important okay Therefore, uh, we have done uh, a detailed probe into the question. I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, all the very best, all the very best for your coming J Advanced Examination 2024. Thank you.